Hello, owls, and welcome to week 11 content. Um, just chiming in here um, to talk you through the lesson plan. And we have a new app that we're using this week called No Red Ink. And that's going to replace our common lit for this week. And it's also going to replace like that extra project. Like um, sometimes we do a paragraph of the week and, and sometimes we do... News ELA, and so this is going to be that project grade for us for this week. So if you are watching this video, you have safely landed on our stream page, um, but I do want to come on over here to the Classwork tab and click him, and you'll see that um, my stuff is already is grayed out right now, G-R-A-Y-E-D, grayed out for you because it's not going to post till 8, and this video is at 7.16 p.m., so this will all pop up for you in just a little bit. So, as always, here is your start here lesson plan, and if I click that, open up my Google Slides, and let's see what kind of fun we have for us this week. Um, as to... As usual, you have your what to expect each week. Um, we are going to be working digitally and in our ISN. Students are going to practice what you have learned. And um, if you need any additional support, I do have these support features here. Um, I can always pop into a Google Meet if you need me. And then don't forget that you have your weekly quiz on words and content that does not open until Thursday. If I slide through my PowerPoint, um, your week from 12-7 till 12-11, we have five stems this week, so make sure when you're getting your flashcards out that you do have that fifth extra one. We're going to be talking about flashback. Um, our reading for this week is going to be during class. We actually have a spooky story that we're going to be listening to and practicing um, foreshadowing and seeing what clues the author has left for us, and we'll be working on that in class. Um, writing, we have our No Red Ink Diagnostic. Last week, I sent you a link and asked you to join um, my No Red Ink class. Um, several of you were going back and forth and trying it and sending me messages. So if you're still not in there, please send me another message. Um, if you need to go back to last week and week 10 content, I do have that link in there. Again, you do have to have access to that in order to um, complete the diagnostic the, for this week. Uh, and I am going to give you a project grade just to simply finish it. And we do have a foreshadowing anchor chart that we're going to complete. Um, and as always, we are building our digital literacy with uploading an image of our notes and anchor chart to our Google Classroom. Please make sure that your notes are complete and that your anchor chart is complete. Um, this is something that in a real world, when I was seeing you five days a week, we would have done on a Monday. Um, the only way that I can make sure that you are receiving and at least working through and thinking about the curriculum in all of its components for the week is by those pictures. So if you only send me half the pictures, I can only give you half the credit. So um, take time, get those completed for me, please. And then you do have your begin thinking about down here, things that you're gonna need. Moving through the lesson plan, by the end of this week, students will be able to our SWBAT and our learning targets. Um, feel free to read through that. And then your agenda. Um, I like an agenda. I love to be able to cross things off. And so go ahead and take a peek at that. And then we start with our week 12 notes. Like I said, you need your five index cards. I did give you a, our notes are a little shorter this week. Um, we have one lit term and then one big grammar idea of less versus fewer. And so set up your note taking um, before you continue with the PowerPoint. And let's begin. So we do have five stems this week, as I had mentioned. Um, this table here, your stem, your definition, and example. Most of you are grooving or right along with this. At this point, we'll have 50 stems. This is significant because for sixth grade, you have a total of 100 stems that you have to learn before moving to seventh grade. And at this point in the year, you're halfway completed with them, which is just remarkable. Um, as always, these five will be on your test on Thursday, and then I get to pick any old ones I want. So you should always stay current with them. You have to know them. That's why those index cards and that ring of being able to constantly remind yourself and refresh is, is so useful. The example words are just here to help you um, understand how you're going to see these words in context in real life. Um, 
they're not something that you have to memorize, but they, they are helpful. Our lit term this week is flashback. Your video is not there though. So flashback, you're gonna write that into your notes. Less versus fewer. This is one of my favorite things to teach um, face to face, uh, simply because you know I love grammar. But also, um, there's a story that it's a Target story, um, probably over a decade ago. Some grammar person um, had approached Target CEO and or you know, the higher chain management, whatever. And you know those signs at the checkout, it says like 10 items or less, um, you can use this line. And um, I always I always count before I go in those to make sure that I'm obeying the rules because I'm a rule follower. And um, someone who had known the difference between less and fewer had noticed that if you can count the items, the correct grammar is fewer. So the sign at Target saying 10 items or less but what are you doing? You're literally leaning over your cart and you're counting your items. Oh, I have nine items. That means I can use this lane. So if you can count it, it really should say 10 items or fewer, not 10 items or less. And so Target, I believe, is one of the only places that had changed their checkout lines to be grammatically correct in 10 items or fewer. Um, I believe Publix still says less. Now you're going to have to go out there in the real world and grocery lines and just check. And as always, my owls are super sweet about it. Never, ever be disrespectful or a know-it-all into the adults in your life. But with good grammar and the knowledge of grammar, um, it's just a cool education piece. So see if you can see it in the community. Less would be something that you can't count. Um, I made some toffee for my husband this evening, and my recipe required half a cup of sugar. And I can measure the sugar, but I can't count the sugar. I would be there all day if I were to um, count the grains, granules of sugar. So it's not something I count. And that's why I would say less is something I'm not going to count. Okay, so write those notes in your notebook. This is what your notes should look like when they're finished. I have a few examples for you down here. And then, as always, this is a good place to stop if you've had enough ELA for the day and you need a break and go check your other classrooms. Um, that way you know to come back to this spot. But for those of you ready to push on, you continue to slide 14. Here is another list of your five stems and their definitions. Um, you should have 50 index cards at this point. This is a good place to stop and make sure you have all your flashcards. Going through the PowerPoint. Um, I should not say. I did this in last week, too, and no one even called me out. Let's talk about flashbacks. Flashbacks in literature. So, um, flashback in literature. There is a short little Disney clip here that I'd like for you to watch. If you click it, you do get the YouTube link. Um, and this is with a princess. And you can see how she's able to piece pieces of her past together through the use of flashback. So Disney does a good job of um, taking our current situation, flashing us back to explain the story, and then bringing us back forward, which is what your anchor chart is going to talk about today. You start in the present, you go back to the past, and then you return to the present. Um, so once you've watched the video, go ahead and record this anchor chart in the right-hand side of your notebook. And so your finished notebook should look something like this. I changed my arrows around a little bit. There's this one. They went right to the right and I went down. Um, yeah, it's just as long as you're getting the content in there. So this is my finished notebook. This is what you're going to upload to Google Classroom. Exploring no red ink. Um, this week you are going to complete the reading diagnostic. I did give you the link here for you to take the pretest. Um, if you have not already signed up for no red ink, you may have to go through that process again. Um, the diagnostic you can see up here is going to assess your current abilities in sentence structure, singular versus plural possessives, punctuation with conjunctions. That's at comma fanboy that we do in ELA. Verb tense, commonly confused words, identifying parts of speech, can't wait to see. Uh, rules of capitalization and subject verb agreement. So do your very best. Um, again, you're getting full credit for doing your best on this. Um, reading and writing go hand in hand. And if you can be strong in one, you can be strong in the other. They do support one another. So it's a 32 question test, um, diagnostic test. Do your best on that for me. 
and your checklist is at the end. You did it. You've completed week 12 of learning material. It does remind you that the Google Classroom quiz does not open until Thursday. Although this past week I did open it on Wednesday since I had some students coming in on Wednesday um, to get caught up with work. So I opened it Wednesday. I'm a sucker for that, I know. I might do the same thing, but it doesn't open until later of the week. The reason is I do want you to have some time to kind of process the notes and um, put them into your long-term memory. Um, I think that's all I have for you this week. Uh, I'm really excited to see the no red ink and how that works with your writing diagnostic. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm only an email away and I hope you have a wonderful week.